everyone and welcome to a sculpting video. Just noticed that in my last video I didn't even introduce myself so I will now. My name is Relise Maxine and I'm an artist as you can obviously tell from my other videos and my whole channel and the fact that I have a couple paintbrushes right there. <laughs> so I have another sculpting video for you guys today and if you haven't seen my last one click the link in the description or click the card to check it out. Please watch both of them though. If you're gonna watch that one first, come back to watch this one. So let's just get started sculpting. So I drew these sketches last Tuesday night and the next day I sculpted for like two and a half hours. But anyways, these are the cats. Starting with Diva, a chunky tabby cat. Cookie, a big chunk calico cat. Jinx, a slim black cat. And Ginger, a one-eyed orange cat. Like my last sculpting video, I'm using Crayola's air dry clay in white, this self-healing cutting mat, and these clay tools. I like these a lot because they help me blend out the clay and they're also double-sided so you kind of get twice the amount of tools which is awesome. And of course water because it's a free blending tool and if you have any dried out clay it helps freshening it up. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some clay following my sketch in the order of the cats so I'm starting out with Diva first, the chubby tabby cat. And I wanted to do a different breed and size cats because I thought it would thought it'd be fun to. So I'm making the base body shape for Diva and the shape is very similar for the other three cats because after Diva I just continued with the techniques I did but made the others different because they're differently sized. And as you can see here I'm using a little bit of water to help me blend out this extra piece of clay that I'm adding to create the shape for Diva. And I can't believe I almost forgot to mention my henna tattoo right here on my right hand. My college had a body artist come by for a few hours and do free henna for everybody. So she did a mix of traditional and non-traditional henna designs. And when I heard her say sun and moon, I was like, yes, do that. This is what it looked like right after I got my henna tattoo. And this is what it looks like right now, almost two weeks later. It's really pretty much almost faded. There's still a bit of the sun in there, but a few days ago, the designs on my fingers started to fade, and I was like, oh no. Now I pretty much got the shape I want down. I'm just gonna smooth it out with my fingers more and create the little head shape to match my sketches. With a little piece of clay, I'm gonna make a squiggly cat tail that'll sit on the back of the cat. And I'm going to blend that out to the body by using one of these yellow clay tools that I have. I also like to dip it in- You got something to say, Ming? Sorry about that. She's in heat, so she's being a little needy. I like to dip the tool in water so I can blend it out better. That's what I wanted to say. And for the cat ears, I shaped some clay into little triangles. And, I'm, and to blend that out, I'm using the same techniques that I just mentioned. Now that the ears are done, I'm working on the little cheeks that cats have. What what are they actually called though? I'm gonna look that up. Well, it just came out of the rabbit hole of searching and learned some weird things. They're basically like upper lips, but in other cases it can be like a signifier to the cats for the cat's gender or if they've been neutered or not. The more you know. But I'm still gonna call them cheeks because that's what they look like to me. For the nose, I just rolled up a piece of clay and blended that to the cheeks. And using this flat edge tool, I'm making lines for the eyes. When cat's eyes are closed, it's just like a little angled line and it's so adorable. Sculpting Diva is finished and on to working our big chunk of a cat, Cookie. 
I basically did the same things that I did when I sculpted Diva. I just made Cookie slightly wider and a little taller, and his ears and cheeks are a little bigger also. This is how Cookie ended up looking. Not that much different from Diva, but of course the cats are all going to be different colors, so they will have very distinctive features. Oh, and there's a bunch of dried specks of clay on the little mat here, and I had to scrape that off before I started working on our next cat, Jinx, who's an all-black cat, and she's the slimmest of the bunch. I also don't have much of a backstory for either of the cats, really. I just want to give them cute names so they can be all different instead of just... That's the orange cat, that's the black cat, you know? And I mostly just googled, like, names for cats and pick picked the ones I liked the most. I'm sorry if this is going by a little quickly, there's just a lot to do here. I spent a total of four hours working on these cats. And that was Jinx. Let's get on to sculpting our one-eyed orange cat, Ginger. Okay, so the reason I gave Ginger one eye is because even though the cats are different breeds, I just wanted to add an odd flair to at least one of the cats. I just wanted to make sure that they were all very different. And if you haven't heard this before, people usually call orange cats the craziest because they're very active cats. But since I didn't add legs to any of these sculptures, the only thing I could actually remove would be an ear and an eye, or an eye. So I chose an eye. These are all the cats after I was done sculpting. And here they are almost a day and a half later, fully dry. Let's take a closer look at them, again starting in order. Since Diva is a tabby cat, I'll be using gray colors and pink for her nose and ears. I mixed black and gray for a darker color as the base, and even and an even darker color for the stripes that tabbies are known to have. Cookie is a calico cat, so I'll be using orange, brown, and natural beige. Beige? Beige. <laughs> I'll also be using pink for the ears and nose, and white for the base. Calico cats usually have lots of nude colors, like browns and tans, so I'm adding tan and brown spots on the cat. To keep you all in suspense, I'm, I'm saving the reveal for last, so let's get started on our black cat, Jinx. Since Jinx is supposed to be all black, I felt it was too plain and I wanted to add some brown highlights for Jinx's nose, tip of his tail, and his ears.
While doing Jinx's ears, I somehow forgot that I didn't add Cookie's ears, so I'm going to do that right now. For Ginger, I'm using the same colors that I did for Cookie, but of course in different ways. And I promise the orange does not look like this nacho cheese color that it does right now. The camera somehow changed the hue. And after painting, I noticed that Ginger kind of looks like Tigger from the Winnie the Pooh, but with one eye. And before I reveal the cats, I wanted to give them little like name tags and I'm going to use this turquoise paint. I originally wanted to carve their names like underneath them right where I'm painting, but I wasn't sure how it would turn out and I was afraid I would mess up and ruin them, so painting their names was the safest option. I also do regret not glazing them after I painted them, but I'll probably do that on my own another day. And time for the reveal! I can't even hold them in my hands, but they're done. If this inspired you to make your own cat or your own little clay clat, clay clats. If this video inspired you to make your own clay creation or clay cat, tag me on Instagram, I'd love to see them. Hope you enjoyed my video, thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions, please comment down below. So subscribe, click that bell to get notified when I upload another video, and happy holidays.